named after uh, Thomas Jefferson. And Adams, I believe, is John Quincy Adams, and not the first John Adams. <clears throat> All right, so Project 2 is now officially assigned. Um, we talked about it for a, quite a while last class. I did that example in Excel. Officially assigned, it's due on Class 17. So if you need the date of Class 17, you look in the syllabus. That's your syllabus, so Class 17 would be... Yeah. April 8th. Okay, so <clears throat> last class we looked at Hamilton's method, named after Alexander Hamilton, and it was pretty quick, straightforward, seemed quite fair, um, fast and easy. Okay. So, um, April 8th. Oh, that must be, uh, oh, am I looking at the wrong section? Sorry, sorry. Let me, it does? You must have an old, you must have an old version of the syllabus. Yep. <laughs> okay, so remember that in Hamilton's method, you divided every state's population by the standard divisor, we rounded all the standard quotas down, right? Just chop off the decimals. So everyone gets at least their lower quota. So up until right here, everything seems fair because we've done the exact same thing to every state. Divide by the standard divisor, chop off the decimal, you get at least your lower quota. Okay, but then we start handing out the surplus seats and this is where you might have states start to complain, right? Like why did they get a surplus seat and we don't? You know, and, and the reason we know is because they were closest to you know, sort of earning a whole nother seat. That's how we give out the surplus seats. But um, a small state who's not quite as close to reaching a whole nother seat might have a larger percentage of their population going unrepresented. Right? So, <clears throat> um, so Hamilton's method does tend to favor larger states a bit. Um, so, so, so states have something to complain about with Hamilton's method. So Jefferson is trying to address this complaint of where the unfairness happens in that we have to give out extra seats. After we round down, there are extra seats to be given out. So Jefferson's idea says, let's just tweak the divisor. Let's not use the standard divisor. We'll just change that number we're dividing by so that after we round everything down, there's nothing extra to give out. All right, we'll just play with that divisor so that there'll be nothing left over. All right, so to make this idea work, we need the quotas to be what? A little bit bigger or a little bit smaller? Bigger, right? Because if you, if you have standard quotas, like look at Parador, right? These are our standard quotas, 32.92, 138. 0.72. When you round these down, chop off the decimals and add them up, you're always going to have too few seats, right? So if we if we need to make these numbers a little bit bigger, so that this will add up to exactly 250 after we round down. Okay, so we need the quotas to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to change my standard divisor. I want to change that 50,000. Should I make it a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller? Smaller, yeah. If you want the answer to a division problem to be bigger, you make the thing that you're dividing in smaller so that it will go in more times. All right, so we want to make the divisor a little bit smaller. So why do we call it the plates? The method of plates divisor. They do? Yeah. Who calls it that? In the reading, they called it the method of greatest divisor? Method of least divisor? I don't know. I rereading the eighth edition, the newest edition. Maybe that's something new in those edition in that edition that I haven't read. I don't know. Let me think about it. Yeah, we'll come back to it. Method of greatest divisor. Maybe it's the greatest divisor you can use without having any leftover seats. Yeah. 
and with atoms, it would be the, the smallest divisor you can use without having any leftover seats. So we're going to take our, our standard divisor, make it a little bit smaller. That will make all these quotas, the, these exact shares, um, a little bit bigger, so that hopefully when we round down, we have nothing left over. All right, so if we revisit Parador's Congress here, we're going to use Jefferson's method to apportion the seats. So I already have the standard quotas because we did this whole thing last class, right? I just um, remember you find a standard divisor by taking the total to total, total people divided by total seats, and we get 50,000. And then we got each of these numbers, 32.92, 138.72. Those numbers came from taking each state's population and dividing by 50,000. So my lower quota is what you get when you just chop off the decimals. So we have 32, 138, 3, 41, 13, 19, which is 246. Oops, why did I write 3? So you add those up, you get 246, which is too few, right? I don't have enough seats. So Hamilton's method would take those four seats and just hand them out, right? Jefferson would say, well, I could mess with this 50,000. Instead of using 50,000, if I make that number a little bit smaller, it will go into the population sizes a few more times, right? A little bit more will fit in to each population. And then hopefully when I round them down, I'll get exactly 250. So there's a little bit of magic in deciding um, how much to change the 50,000 by. I know I need to make it smaller, but by how much, right? Should I go down to 10 or should I go down to 49,500? So I'm just going to, the ma magic, right? 49,500, that's what we're going to use. And I'll, I'll explain later how to get it. So what we're going to do, though, for now, is I'm going to take each population and divide by this new modified quota that's a little bit smaller than the standard divisor. Right? I'm going to divide by 49,500. So 1, 6, 4, 6, 0, 0, 0, divided by 49,500. And now I have 33.25. So you see what happened by making the divisor a little bit smaller, the answer came out a little bit bigger. So that's what we were hoping for. All right, so now we do 6936 divided by 49,500, 140.12, 3.11. Oops. 42.24, 13.83, 19.96. All right, so these numbers no longer represent each state's exact fair share, right? That's your lower quota. That's your um, standard quota. When you divide by the standard divisor, this is your exact fair share, right? So these new numbers that we get by using a modified divisor kind of mean nothing, right? We're dividing by a completely arbitrary divisor. The 50,000 meant every 50,000 people in the state, there should be one representative, right? 49,500, we're just saying, okay, now every 49,500, we're going to give a representative. Just totally arbitrary number. Just has to be smaller than 50,000. So these results don't really mean anything, and if you add them up, they're not going to add up to something significant. Like it might be more than 250, it might be less than 250. I don't know what they're going to add up to. So this number, I just almost never fill in. All right, so now to finish, Jefferson is going to do the same thing that Adams does, that, um, that Hamilton does, just round everything down, and then 
fingers crossed, we're not going to have anything left over to give out. So if I chop off the decimals, I have 33, 140, 3, 42, 13, 19. So we just chop off the decimals, and when you add those all up, because I just chop off the decimals, I'm not rounding. Yep, I'm not rounding conventionally. I'm rounding down, right? Just chop off the decimal. So let's see, between my original lower quota and my new modified lower quota, I gained a seat for state A, gained two seats for state B, and I gained a seat for state D. So that's four seats picked up. Everything else stayed the same, so these will add up to 250. So that's Jefferson's idea. Rather than having the states fight over who gets the extra seat, we won't have any extras. We'll just change the divisor, no extras. Emma, do you see a problem? Yeah, is it is it any better? The bigger populations all got the extra seats, yeah. What's worse than before? Can you pinpoint it? Which state got two? B, right, yeah, B. This The state with the very biggest population, right, this is their standard quota. That's their exact fair share, 138.72. So it seems like the fair thing would be they either get 138 or 139, right? You can't give out a part of a seat. So you, the, the two closest numbers to their exact fair share is 138 or 139. But we gave them 140, right? So uh, that's a problem. We'll just, we'll call it, they got two extra seats. And they're the biggest state, and that is not a coincidence, right? The larger populations are going to benefit from Jefferson's method. So here's a summary of the method. Um, find a suitable divisor D. So that's the 49,500. Um, once you have that divisor, use D as a divisor. Compute each state's modified quota. That's the state population divided by your divisor D. Step three, each state is apportioned its modified lower quota, which is what you get when you just chop off the decimal. Right. The hard part of Jefferson's method is step one, right? finding a suitable divisor. So here's a little flow chart that'll help you with it. Use D to find your quotas. Usually you start with the standard divisor. Right. Chop off the decimal. Add up all your lower quotas. Call that some T. Right. Does T equal the number of seats in Congress? Yes, then you're done. Right. No, if T is too small, make D smaller and start again. And if T is too big, make D bigger and start again. Yeah, I like this one better too. <laughs> so a very loose guide, which will not lead you to the correct divisor um, every time or you know, even in the first few times, but it's a good place to start. A rough guide for choosing how much to change D by is to change it by half a percent for each seat off you are, right? So, for example, in the, in the problem we just did, we were off by four seats, right? So we'd want to change my divisor of 50,000 by 2%, half a percent for each seat off. So I would want to decrease 50,000 by 2%, and you would do that by doing 0.02 times 50,000, that's 1,000, right? So, but that would end up being too much. So this is a very rough guide, yeah. So if I were using that guide, I would have changed it by 1,000, bringing it down to 49,000. It wouldn't have worked, so I would have had to come back up a little bit. Right? So the, the Jefferson's method has a big guess and check component of trying to find the correct divisor. Yeah. So 
Yeah. Yeah. To go a little bit higher. Yeah. Yeah. That's a yeah. Good. So um, yeah. So if you look at the point nine two, you would say, um, you know, fifty thousand almost went in a whole another time, right? So if I change, I don't, I'm not going to have to change the divisor by very much to get this to be 33 point something. Yeah. And I have a lot of big decimals, so I probably... Yeah, really good. Yeah. 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 Oceana, do you have a question? Yeah. So, so Hamilton's method um, has m many drawbacks that we haven't gone into yet because I'm sort of saving one whole class for the bad stuff. <laughs> but, um, but think about politics, right? Even the most fair method, some state is going to complain because they, th they think they should get more seats. And politics responds when powerful states complain about something. So we have had all these like, okay, we'll try to we'll try to address your complaint, and now another state has a complaint. Okay, we'll change the method and we'll address your complaint, right? So there have been all these methods throughout U.S. history. Some of them are good and some of them are terrible. The, some of the good ones we threw away for no good reason, using terrible ones, um, because like so Jefferson. What state was Jefferson from? Virginia. Large state, small state. It was a large state at the time, right? Jefferson's method favors large states, right? So this is why these methods come and go um, objectively. That's a great question, right? And you can ask, why does the government do what it does in like a million situations? All has to do with power and getting what you want. Right. Yeah, modifying the divisor has really no meaning, right? Yeah, yeah. It is random. It doesn't really have much. Yeah. He's just playing with the numbers to try to make them work. Yep. Okay, so let's just quickly go through how we could have come up with the 49,500. So here I've got my, uh, you start with a standard divisor. It's always a good place to start. And... Um, I get my lower quotas, 32, 138, 3, 41, 13, 19. You add them up and you get 246, right? 246 is too small. So I'm going to change my divisor. I'm going to make it smaller because that will make all my quotas a little bit bigger. So my next step here is going to be make D smaller. And my very rough guide right, is to change your divisor by about half a percent for each seat off. So because I'm four seats away from what I want, half a percent for each seat would be 2%, right? And like I just showed you a minute ago, 2% of 50,000 is 49,000. So if I go through, sorry, <laughs> that was an incorrect statement. 2% of 50,000 is 1,000, so that puts us at a divisor of 49,000. So then I go through and I take each population and divide by 49,000. Three point one four forty two point six seven thirteen point nine seven twenty point one six. Okay, so now I don't ever add these up because it doesn't come to any kind of meaningful number because the choice of divisor was completely arbitrary. So I just don't add them up. 
take the modified lower quotas and I get 33, 141, this is just chopping off the decimals, 3, 42, 13, 20. So for my original 246, for my original lower quotas, I've gained a seat for state A, so that's one. I gained three, state, three seats for state B, so I'm at four, same, plus one, so I'm at five, same, plus one from at six. This comes up to 252, right. which is too big, right? I want it to come out at 250. At 252, my, my quotas now are all a little bit too big, right? So to make my quotas smaller, I need to make my divisor, what? Bigger. Make D bigger. Right? So now I, I know 50,000 is too big, right? 49,000 is too small. So maybe I try halfway in between, 49,500, which we already did, and we know it comes out, right? So this is... Jefferson's method, there's a large guess and check component that can take you some time, right? Because um, you have to make an initial guess and then you use that initial guess to inform your next guess. Excel is really great for this, right? Because then once you have it all programmed, all you have to do is change the divisor, hit enter, and psh, everything changes, right? And you can see the results like that and you don't have to spend all your time working through the problem. especially when there's 50 states, right? <clears throat> so Jefferson's method is an example of something called a modified divisor method. Two other modified divisor methods were proposed as alternatives to Jeff Jefferson's, one by John Quincy Adams and another by Daniel Webster. The only difference between the three is the rule you use for rounding. So as we just saw, Jefferson met Jefferson's method rounds everything down, just chops decimals off. Adam's method, only difference in the method is we round everything up. We bump everything up to the next number. Okay, find a suitable divisor, compute each state's modified quota, but in step three, bump all the quotas up. Round everything up. Same flowchart, right? The only difference is bump quotas up instead of round quotas down. Add them all up. Is it equal to the number of seats in Congress? Yes, you're done. No, if it's too small, make D smaller. If it's too big, make D bigger. Okay. Same rough guide for choosing how much to choose, how much to change D by. So let's look at Parador's Congress. And I will apportion it with Adam's method this time. Okay. So I've got my standard quotas, right? I divided everything by 50,000. I got my standard quotas. They should always add up to exactly the number of seats w when you use the standard divisor. So that's a, I always put that one in because it's a good check that you're doing everything right. My next step is to round up, bump up for Adam's method. Okay, because this is Adam's method, the next step is upper quota. So this is different than Hamilton and Jefferson. Both of those chopped off the decimal, rounding everything down. Now we're going to bump everything up. So 32.92 gets bumped to 33. 138.72 gets bumped to 139. 3.08 gets bumped to 4, right? So this is not standard rounding. Normally 3.8 would round down to 3, right? But I'm rounding everything up, regardless of how much the decimal is. It goes up. All right, so I've got 42. Oops. 14. 20. So I add these up. What do I get? 252, which is too big, right? Too big. So what should I do to D? Make it bigger. This is too big, right? So I would like it if all of my quotas were a little bit smaller. To make the answer to a division problem smaller, you should make the divisor bigger make D bigger. Okay. So I'm off by two seats. I should change my um, divisor by 1%. Okay. What's 1% 1 of 50,000? 500, yeah. 
Yeah, 10% would be 5,000, 1% is 500. So if I change this to, what should I, what should I make the divisor? 50,500. All right, let's see if that works. So now I take each of my populations, divide by 50,500. One thirty seven point three, three point oh five. Oops, I did that one again. Forty one point four. Thirteen point six. Nineteen point six. Okay, this number means nothing. So I don't even bother adding it. Now my modified upper quota, that means take your modified quotas that we just got, bump them all up. Thirty three. One thirty eight. 42. So no matter what size the decimal is, we always go up to the next number. 14, 20. All right, what's that add up to? 251. Yeah, I just lost the one seat from state B. So that's 251. Still too big, right? So what should I do to D? Make it bigger. Make D bigger. Yeah, we should just make it a tad bit bigger. Well, 500, we just changed it by 500 or So, should I change it by the same amount or the same percent? Yeah, so maybe we'll do 1% I'm sorry, like maybe half a percent, because we're only off by one seat this time. So if we change it by like half a percent. So 1% is. Sort of change it by 1%. Is all maybe. Yeah. I mean, this is a guess and check. There's, there's no hard and fast rule about what's going to work. Yeah. Sure, Dwight. Yeah. Great. That's a All right, so we've got we're looking at um, B and C. We have we have ideas put forth that B or C will be the first one to change. C. So because I round these um, up, right? I round these up. I need one of these numbers to drop below, right? Like I need the 3.05 to come out as like 2.9 something, so that when I round it up, I get three and not four. Or with B, the one set 37.3, it needs to drop down to 136 point something, so it rounds to 137. So I don't know which one's going to happen first. Um, but if they both drop, it's too much, yeah. <clears throat> Those are the two to work on, yeah. That's a good idea. We'll find the solution there, and then, and then once we find a number that makes one of them drop and the other one stay the same, We'll be in good, a oh, good place. Okay, so let's look at 154,000. 
So if I divide that by, let's see, the last one I did was 50,500. Maybe I'll drop it by half as much. I mean, increase it by half as much. So last time I jumped by 500, maybe I'll jump by 250. So I'm going to divide by 50,750. And that doesn't get me low enough, right? But let's see what it does to B. Yeah, 6936 divided by 50,750. That gets me to 136.7, which is what I want, right? All right, so let's let's do um, 50,750 and try it for all of them. What was this? 136.7. <laughs> 13.5. I'll fix it in a second. There we go. Okay, so yeah, we don't add up the modified quotas. So now I bump them all up, and I'm going to have 33, 137, 3, Four, thank you. Forty-two, fourteen, twenty, and for my previous iteration, I lost one seat, so I have two hundred fifty. Done. Okay, anyone see a problem in these results? An unfairness, maybe? State, yeah, so state B, with Jefferson's method, it got a boon, right? They got a portion of 140 seats, right? And their, their standard quota, 138.72. Fairest thing, would if we would either give them 138 or 139, since you can't give out the partial seat. But in Jefferson's method, we gave them 140, so they, like, got a huge benefit. And in Adam's method, we give them 137, like one fewer than the fewest they should get. So again, state B is the problem, but this time they get gypped. Yeah, yeah so it's larger states that... Um, Yeah. Yep. So so Adams method benefits smaller states. Where was John Quincy Adams from? Massachusetts, big state or small state? It was small, yeah. Yep. So so Adams put forth a method that would benefit small states. Imagine that, right? It was a big state then? Oh, okay, I, I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> A federalist? Right, but we're looking at population size, not land size. But that's a... Oh. We'll have to look that up. I'm going to put a little note. Look up size of Virginia and Massachusetts. Not now. In history. Yeah. 
Okay, so here's a little mnemonic to help you remember the methods we've learned so far. Hamilton's method is like, think of like a holiday family dinner when you have ham and there's like lots of leftover ham and you have to put it in little packages and give it out to everybody in the family to take home, right? So there's, there's extra ham to give out, right? Jefferson's method, look at the J and the J is like an arrow pointing down, which means round down, right? And in Adam's method, in Adam's method, look at the A, which is like an arrow pointing up, which would be round up. Put the J. <laughs> well, you can make up your own. These are what I use. OK, so now I'm going to have you practice the three methods that we've learned. We have a uh, apportionment problem. I want you to solve it using Hamilton's method, Jefferson's method, and Adam's method.